There exists a large body of evidence demonstrating that when two people are engaged in conversation, they naturally modify their verbal and nonverbal behaviors to become more like one another. For example, if I'm talking to someone who speaks much slower than I do, then I will, without even conscious awareness, reduce my speaking rate to more closely match that of my conversational partner. This behavioral alignment or matching is observed at multiple levels of communication, including our intonation patterns, how loud or how quiet we choose to speak, our word choice, linguistic style, and syntactic structure. We also see it in nonverbal actions such as body posture, gesture, and facial expressions. This communication phenomenon is known as conversational entrainment. And while the mechanisms underlying the tendency to entrain are not yet fully understood, there is abundant evidence that entrainment helps with both speech message comprehension and interpersonal connectedness. That is, entrainment has been shown to minimize the cognitive effort associated with speech processing and is considered fundamental to the development of rapport, affiliation, and intimacy between conversational partners. Accordingly, entrainment deficits could impact both the efficiency and success of communicative interactions, leading to social isolation and diminished quality of life. While conversational entrainment has been studied widely across many disciplines, it has received limited attention in the field of speech pathology, where its implications may have direct clinical relevance. That is, entrainment deficits may contribute to the conversational breakdowns that our clients face. It is in fact pretty plausible for us to propose that entrainment deficits may characterize communication disorders. This is because the capacity to entrain is dependent upon three critical components. So we need the ability to perceive rhythmic information, the ability to produce rhythmic information, and the ability to integrate rhythmic information. In theory, a breakdown in any or all components of this model will disrupt entrainment and negatively impact conversational success. One can therefore imagine that many different types of communication disorders will interfere with entrainment, although for different reasons. For example, individuals with autism spectrum disorder or a hearing impairment may have difficulty detecting the rhythmic properties of their conversational partner and therefore lack the necessary input to entrain. On the other hand, individuals with dysarthria or apraxia of speech may have no trouble detecting the rhythms of their communication partner, but the associated motor impairments may prevent them from adjusting their own communicative behaviors accordingly. And then what about the healthy conversational partner? How do they respond and adjust to pathological communicative rhythms? And so this hypothesis that entrainment deficits may be present in our clients with communication disorders is essentially what forms the basis of this paper. We wanted to firstly ask the question, is conversational entrainment even a topic of investigation to explore in the field of speech pathology? And further, if it is, what does the study of entrainment offer our field? So as a first step to exploring conversational entrainment in speech pathology, we examined whether the presence of dysarthria had any measurable effect on the spoken productions of healthy subjects. So we brought healthy people into the lab and had them read aloud sentences in response to audio recordings of both dysarthric and healthy speech. This study revealed that healthy subjects modify their speaking rate and intonation patterns to align more closely with both the healthy and the disordered speech. However, the subjects entrained more closely with the healthy speech relative to the disordered speech. This finding supports the notion that entrainment occurs in the context of dysarthria, but also points out that the nature of the speech disorder disrupts the process to some degree. We spend the rest of the paper discussing entrainment and offering direction for how we might further explore this communication phenomenon with clinical populations. Given our entrainment findings in the lab-based turn-taking paradigm, the next step was to look at entrainment during real conversations between two people. In this second study, we showed that verbal interactions between healthy individuals and individuals with dysarthria are characterized by significantly less acoustic entrainment than verbal interactions between two healthy individuals. We also found that conversational peers who exhibit less entrainment are also less successful in their communication exchanges. 
So it appears that dysarthria does induce entrainment deficits, and further, that the level of deficit impacts the success of the conversation. We have recently applied for funding to further this research, with the long-term goal of developing a clinical tool to diagnose entrainment deficits. While this will be developed in the context of motor speech disorders, we anticipate being able to modify the tool for use with other clinical populations. That entrainment deficits are both real and of consequence in dysarthria is a key finding for clinicians. Lack of entrainment may contribute to conversational breakdowns. If we can detect these entrainment deficits, then we can work towards improving comprehension and interpersonal connectedness during conversation for our clients, which as we know, has a significant impact on quality of life. More research is needed, but the findings to date certainly indicate that addressing conversational entrainment may become a critical component in our future assessment and management plans.